in earlier videos on the digital logic we've talked about uh, boolean and arithmetic how do you add binary numbers how do you subtract binary number how do you convert binary numbers in this particular video we're going to move up a level and we're going to start looking at boolean algebra so in order for us to start working on boolean algebra the very first thing we got to establish is establish the domain that we are working in in this particular case we're going to use um, a set of postulates uh, called Huntington's uh, first set of postulate to kind of get us started. Uh, postulate axioms or propositions are, are things that um, are stated without proof because they are basically the definition of the environment we are in. So we're going to be working in a bin uh, in a boolean, which is basically a bin using binary numbers, which means every variable we have will only be able to have two values associated with it um, either going to be a zero or going to be a one so so we have to we have to start with that premise that we are working in a world where boolean has two distinct elements we'll start and run down here and that's going to be a zero and one are the distinct values you can have once we have this then some of these postulates become hopefully obvious which says that if i the only values i can have in here um, then if x and y are binary in other words if the value of x is zero or one y is zero and one when i or it i will get zero and one pretty obvious um, and then the same thing for the and. Um, there is an element zero such that if you or that zero with x, you're going to get x. Um, and then there's an element one such that if you and a variable with that, you will get that same value. Okay, And it just keeps going. As you can see, these are um, self-explanatory. And it's telling us that is commutative in other words x plus y is equal to y plus x uh, or x i'm sorry not plus or x and y is the same as y and x and then we have the distributive property as well which basically is almost like a multiply but this is an and uh, so you can distribute and through here and uh, these this side is equal to that side um, and then goes on uh, to a variation of the same thing and then the uh, the fifth one or the last one we're going to cover it says if i take an element in this space and i or it with this element in that space i'm going to get a one because it doesn't matter whether x is zero or one we will have a one or zero which by definition is one and then in the same same scenario for the b portion it says one and zero is equal to zero so these are called postulates these are obvious these are the foundation we're going to use our foundational definitions we're going to use uh, throughout uh, our use of boolean algebra in describing digital logic uh, before i go forward so you may have noticed something kind of interesting here which you can see that for every postulate i have an a and a b and you notice that um, it, it, uh, when we go from one to the other the one thing that changes is the or changes to and and changes to or and later on we'll see that one changes to zero and zero changes to one this this idea is referred to as a duality um, and the duality basically says if you have a relationship its dual is also correct and now what is a dual of something dual of something is when i can take Every time I see a zero, I replace it with a one. Every time I see an and, I replace it with an or. Back, uh, back and forth. You can go either. You know, if you see a one, you replace it with zero, and if you see an or, you replace it. So it's an interchange back and forth. So let's go take a look at this example. For example, the dual of x or zero, if I follow that rule, is x and one. Okay, and the dual of um, um, x or y and z is x and y so notice what we're doing we're replacing everywhere you see an or with an and 
and every solution, every place you see an and with an or, and we get the other definition. So this is called um, duality, and uh, um, just just a piece of information for you to have. We do apply duality quite a bit as you as we walk through the theorems. For every theorem, we've tried to write the dual of that theorem as well. So I won't go through these theorems um, in detail. We need to prove these theorems, and I'll start with the simple one. So the very first one, it says, if I, mm, so by the way, in, in this text, negation, we either show it this way, or we show a negation with the prime. So those are equivalent to each other. Depends, this is a little more convenient to type in than this one. So you may want to adopt this one for your writing. So here basically says if I take an X, if I take an X and invert it and then invert that, then I get the X back. How are we going to prove it? The simplest way to prove this is by showing all the possibilities. So since we know we are in Boolean algebra, X all the values x can take are 0 and 1 and that's it so the next question is then what is x not not okay if i take a 0 complement uh, it i get a 1 complement it again i get a 0 and 1 oh they are equal therefore i have proven that this is correct so that's for 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 uh, for cases where we have just a few variables, two or three or four variables, the easiest way to prove that they are true is through table. Now, the next item here is the um, this, the next theorem is idiopotency uh, theorem, which basically all it says is that if I or x is together, I get an x. So either x is zero or x is one. Or it together, and you get that. And then. Um, the identity element theorem is pretty obvious as well as you look at those. Mm, absorption theorem um, just just basically points out that if I have an X, then that you can literally ignore X and with anything else because if X is true, then you're going to get a true anyway. If your x is false, it really doesn't matter what y is because it's getting ended, it goes away. So why waste time with this term? You're done with x. And then it has its um, dual as well. Association theorem is just um, basically says the parentheses in the case of or really does not make much of a difference how you associate it. And a dual of that would be the same thing is true for, for ending a bunch of terms. <clears throat> um, this AJCC theorem we use a lot for minimization, which basically says if I've got a variable x and that is ended with a y, ended with its complement, I really don't need y because x is really the controller. Because y, regardless of what happened, x is ended with a 1, x ended with a 0. Whether y is 1 or 0, it really doesn't matter. Therefore, that whole thing really relies on x. The answer is x. We use this as a lot because when we have um, terms that only one variable changes, we call those neighbors or neighbors of each other. This, sometimes this theorem six is called the neighboring theorem as well. The consensus theorem is a little more involved, and you might want to prove it yourself. So this one, this one is a little bit longer, um, and um, you've got uh, x and y and y and z. So you've got y ended with two variables, then you've got um, this middle terms that takes the other two variables and end them with each other. You notice what happens. It gets reduced to x and y or x not z. This, I would encourage you to take a minute and prove to yourself that this is indeed true, okay? And again, uh, in this particular case is a little longer uh, so you will have, you will actually have a number of things. You will have x, y, and z. Those are the three variables. Oops. Those are the three variables that you have. So you just do the true table, and true table is basically a binary number incremented one after the other.
and then you take you take you find out what the value of the left hand is left hand expression and then the right hand expression okay left hand expression is this one right hand expression would be this one so you do it the assumption is that these two will be exactly identical for every row if they are you've proven it if it's not um, well we got a problem but <laughs> there better be because this is a well understood and agreed upon um, uh, theorem so I'll let you prove it one way or the other hopefully prove it that's true simplification theorem basically says if I've got an X and then I've got an X naught and Y I can just replace it with X or Y that's kind of pretty obvious because it says look X is either true or false if it's true then we're done it's a one if it's false then it depends on what Y is if it's false then X naught is one but now we've got to wait for y, so no, so we can simplify it to this form. And of course, it's dual, it's right here. The Morgan's theorem is another, it's the last one we're gonna cover, uh, but it's a very interesting one and it's very useful because later on we're gonna use this in the next video or so to prove that and can be replaced by or, or can be replaced by and, they are the same thing literally and this is the proof we're going to use this is called the de morgan's theorem which basically says if i have x or y i can write that as x not and y not I, this this one is important enough we're going to do the dual form of it too it says x ended with y not is x not or y not okay so let's look at what it does it takes an and turns it into a or takes an or turns it into an and okay great now this we can prove again with simply doing a truth table this gets a bit tricky in that we don't know what n is but it says the morgan theorem can be generalized to as many variables as you want so since i don't know what n is this one i can't prove using um my normal looking at all the possibilities through a truth table and then proving that left and right is equal to the right hand side uh, equation this one i'm challenged because i have to prove this by induction and the way we do this is we say okay i'm going to take all of so let's let's say i want to prove the first one i'll say okay x1 plus x2 plus da, 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 xn I want to find out what that is well what i could do since since we know this is all going to turn into a boolean value let's call this one y1 okay if i do that then i can say oh this is simply x1 or y1 oh great that's all it is is i'm going to use the since i proved this using truth table i can use the two variable form and say oh that's just simply x1 naught and y1 not now i can come back and replace this with x2 or da, 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 x n and in this case and this got a not over it that's what that was what i put as y1 right so i could say okay why don't we call all of this y2 now we got an x2 or y2 great i'll apply that and now that i've shown that you can do this successively forever and ever I have by induction proven that um, the De Morgan's theorem, the general form, is correct. Okay, so um, these theorems are useful. A lot of time we use them to prove uh, that one design is the same as another design. But more important, some of these are used. For example, De Morgan's theorem is very useful to go between and what we're going to later on using and versus using or gates okay and then some of these other ones are very useful in minimize minimizing uh, our equation so we simplify our design okay so just a quick review of this particular video is we have gone through and have had have reviewed what the huntington's um, first set of postulates are we don't have a proof for them, but they're pretty obvious. We talked about duality, and duality is just interchanging ones and zeros and interchanging ands and ors. 
and we should end up with um, if you if you have a relationship and you do that to it they're still gonna hold for example you can take any of these theorems we talked about and the first one is a dual of the second one or vice versa um, and you can you can look at them and kind of get yourself familiar or familiarized with that so then we talked about the theorems and that you just briefly talked about the proofs we have two kinds of proof available to us one is we can do a truth table and show all the possibilities the other approach would be to use the previously learned theorems to make a case and support or proof that the new theorem is correct through induction that brings us to the end of the introduction to boolean algebra